I didn't do it. <laughs> Wiggling, it's not like coming further out. Dave, you you blew your motor. Why does it sound like that? Because it needs a new clutch and a throw out bearing. All right, what are we doing today, Dave? We're doing a clutch and flywheel and throw out bearing. I'm on confident. your car. Okay. Car. So, welcome. Another install video. This is going to be the be all complete guide to how to replace your clutch in a 350Z. Uh, it's a DE. G35, this should be relatively the same, minus a few interior trim pieces to get the shifter disconnected, but pretty much everything else underneath will be the same. We're gonna give you pro tips. We're gonna be real if we run into any snags or any kind of hard parts, we're gonna let you know. A clutch is a fairly involved job. Uh, one out of five, I'm gonna give this like a three, three and a half because it is long, you do have to drop a transmission but there's not that many specialty tools you need and there's no fabrication. That's like when you get into the fours and fives. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right into it and we're gonna show you everything beginning to end. So first thing you're gonna do, just like you see in every installation guide, anytime you're working on a car is disconnect the negative battery terminal on the car. And now you're thinking clutch hard parts, why are we disconnecting the battery? Because we have to unmount the starter from the transmission. And I did it on my first clutch job. I let the starter hang had something touch, saw sparks. Don't do that. Just take two seconds and disconnect the battery. 10 mil there. Got a little, little corrosion there. We'll clean that up when we, uh, when we put it back together. So before we get the car off the ground, first thing is we're gonna disconnect the shifter. So start shifter removing, and then you're gonna put your hand right here on the back of the boot, and you can kind of Put your hand in and hold it like a ledge and you're going to pull this center console trim piece vertical and you can kind of put your palm here and just pop it up just like that two more there and then you just kind of wiggle it pull it up pull the shifter down into fourth gear and it gives you a little bit more room to pull that up and then you just disconnect the ribbon for your hvac controls just like that set it to the side take this ribbon Kind of wrap it up, tuck it in the back. You don't want to catch that or ruin it. So I got my 10 mil and uh, I can already see, Dave, you're, you're missing a bolt. So you can break these guys loose to get this rubber boot off. All right, so we got the three, because you're missing one, loosened up. They kind of stick into this rubber boot. They do come out, so. There we go. Rubber boot comes up and out. Metal trim bezel up and out. Insulating foam there. All right, so now come in here. You have another rubber boot that goes around your shifter and protects all of its components from road grime and everything. So you're just gonna take fingers, work your way around it, and just pull the whole boot up just like that. And then it will be tight around the shifter. Don't worry, just pull it straight up. And uh, you had a bolt backing out there, Dave. All right, so 10 mils here. Apparently you don't even need tools to take apart Dave's car. <laughs> These are different from the four 10 mils at the top. You can see this little step piece on the bolt. So make sure you keep everything separate, keep it organized. And now this shifter, is tensioned. This plate helps keep it down you know, for like your reverse lockout. So as you loosen this, it will pop up. Be aware. And you can see it raising up as I take it off. There we go. And you can take this plate off, set that down the side. 
and uh, now we're good. So that's all you do from the inside. Everything else is underneath the car. So let's get it on a lift, get in the air. Now you don't need a lift to do a clutch job, but it helps. It, it does help. So in the air, shifter undone from up top, battery disconnected on the locks on the lift. So let's take a look and just kind of get an idea of everything. Um, I do see a little bit of oil and stuff down here. You said you did your valve covers not too long ago, right? Yeah. Okay, so that could be residual from there. We'll check it. Um, so starting underneath, we're gonna do exhaust. After exhaust, we gotta do drive shaft. And then from drive shaft, we'll jump into starting to work around the transmission. Uh, this is Dave's track car. So he does have these connecting pipes, whether it's these, high flow cats, stock cats, you can leave them on. You do not have to remove them. Cool, so as I'm taking this off, I also just realized when you guys get underneath it and you're looking around, there's this front triangulated brace on 350Zs, G35s, all that. You can see the transmission goes past it. So if you're on jack stands, just to give yourself extra room, you may want to remove this just to make it easier to get to everything else. If you're on a lift, not really necessary. We're gonna use a trans jack to grab this and once we break everything loose, we'll slide it back a little bit and then drop it down so we don't have to remove it. <laughs> so now it's time for drive shaft. Four 17s right up here where they connect with the diff. There is nothing at the transmission. It's just slides right in, no bolts, nothing of the sorts. We're gonna use a pry bar and a 17 mil wrench here. Let's break these guys loose. This will spin, so you can keep it in gear, you can use the e-brake, but we will have to put the car back down and rotate it over once because your e-brake's on in the air, which means we can't rotate this over to get to the other 17. So it's like do two, maybe you can get to three, Go back up, rotate everything to where you can get to the other side. You'll see. So we got these two out, the other two are on the top. So we're gonna lower the car, drop the e-brake, rotate it 180 degrees. That way those other two are pointed down, lock the e-brake up, and take them out. Alrighty, right out of the transmission. Pull it past your W brace and your exhaust. And just like that. All right, drive shaft out. Now we're gonna go to this rubber boot, pull it off from the bottom of the shifter. And then you'll see this 12 that keeps the shifter to your shift linkage and your transmission. And you're just gonna back that guy right out. And cool, here we go. And then uh, keep this guy, set that to the side. These boots are like notorious to try and get back on and a lot of people get them wrong. They won't seat 100% so they end up falling down, which isn't the end of the world. Everything's usually fine, but this will rest on the drive shaft. And as the drive shaft, drive shaft spins, it'll eat it up, you'll get holes in it. Uh, we do sell replacement of these from Z1, they're branded ours, they're a little bit tougher, a little bit more resilient, and they have little pull tabs on the side to make sure you get it 100% seated and make installation a little bit easier. All right, so now we're gonna start doing harness and electrical all around, starting right here at crank position. So what I like to do, you can leave it in, but I don't like taking the risk of damaging it. So it's just a single 10 right here or unclip it, and then slide the sensor out. I've seen people leave them in. Uh, when you pull the transmission away, this stays connected to the engine. 
that's fine. But when you go to put the transmission back on, if you don't have it lined up 100% right, you could wedge this in between the engine and the trans and damage it. So just take it out. I like to take the 10 mil, just kind of thread it back into the engine block. That way you don't lose it. And uh, just set this aside and you'll put it in after you get everything back together. All right, so now for the rest of the harness, you got your O2s. There we go. And two. Got a bolt here, here for this harness. Disconnect this one at the starter. Just like that. So we disconnected the starter here. This connector is held on with this bracket, which we'll take that off when we get to the rest of the bell housing. This part has what looks like a 12 up there. And then this one here, there. Well, that's loud. We're taking all these bolts off that hold the brackets on for the harness for the transmission. And then we'll work our way towards the back. All right, so harness coming down on the passenger side of the transmission, get you a 10 mil in there. Break that guy loose. And then what I like to do, because there's a lot of different brackets around this whole thing that we have to remove for this harness to come off, I'll back it out, push the harness to the side, and I'll thread this 10 mil bolt back into the transmission. That way I don't lose any of the hardware or misplace it. Because some are different sizes, some are different depths. So all that does make a difference. This is the bolt that never went there. It goes. Dave. Yes. There's supposed to be two 10 mils. One of them is broken off inside of your transmission. It's okay. It's just a little, little bracket. So, I mean, one was doing a job. <laughs> and then just keep this bracket loose and just follow the wires. Next, we're gonna do this one. And then we'll unplug this guy right here. And then now head to the back and shoot back this way. You'll see, yeah, we'll do this guy and then we'll do this bracket. We're just gonna work, follow the wires and you'll see where everything needs to be disconnected. Connector there, disconnect that guy. All right, and then we get to these two brackets here on the back. It's a 10 on this side, passenger 10 on driver and then that'll come loose. So just did this one, come to the other side over here. One out of the way. Just follow your hand up. It's gonna be kind of hard to see on camera, but there's one more. I believe this is the uh, park neutral switch. And then just feel with your hands. It's a connector, just like the one on this other side. So just squeeze and pull out the pinch and pull it one time is hard. Just pull it out, run it over. We followed this loom all the way to the back. Now we'll come back here and we'll get these two, I believe they are 15s. Yeah. Those are metal shavings. Right, right. Looks like somebody started. That's not a Nissan bolt. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Let's do the slave cylinder. Um, if you're not replacing your slave cylinder, if it's not leaking or showing any signs, just unbolt it from the side of the transmission and just kind of tuck it out of the way. That way you don't have to open up the system. slave cylinder, kind of tuck it over here to the side for now, that way it's out of the way. And uh, look at how much more room we have for activities now. Dave, yes. you're missing some bolts. It won't be the first time. <laughs> so right here, these two spots, there's supposed to be two 14s. Those are missing. Up here, you can see this guy right here. Well, right above it, going the opposite direction that is uh, missing as well. So with the 14s that we do have, let's start there. We'll start on the driver's side. So I'm gonna start with this one. And then there is one here that goes in the opposite direction. Cool. So there's a little plate when you remove the second 14 over here. 
that's going to come down with it that just covers up the whole where the starter would be if this was a JDM. All right, so yeah, now we're gonna do this 14 and this one up here on the passenger side. Take that guy out. 14s are done, so now we're left with the big 17 bell housing bolts. There's one driver side, two driver side, and then you got two up top, so that's three, four, and then one right way at the top on the passenger side. One, two, three, four, five, 17. So let's grab 17. Definitely gonna need a swivel socket or swivel adapter and long extensions. And that was loose. Man, the surprises we're finding with your car. This is, this is awesome. Cool. All right, so we got this one out and now we're getting up into the range to where you guys can't see, but we'll show you when we pull the transmission out, the location of all of them. Wow. Yep, I can take that one out by hand too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that one was not that tight as well. Boom. So, you'll take your long extension, you'll feed it up, and then you just gotta feel for the head of that bolt, slide your socket on it. There we go. Cool. There we go. Bingo. Should be all the bolts around engine and transmission. See, we're already starting to get a little bit of separation from the engine to the transmission. So. Gonna need a transmission jack. We got our transmission jack up, supporting the weight of the transmission, and there was a bolt with a boss on the bottom. This trans jack has slots in it, so we threw one back in to bolt it here just to keep it a little level. It's flat on the bottom, so now we're gonna take apart those rear four 14s that mounted to the body and drop the transmission. Smooth operator. All righty. Before you lower your transmission out, if you're doing this with a different trans jack, jacksons, whatever, if you are full of fluid, once you start tilting, fluid can come out of the back. Uh, so be aware, you may want to drain your fluid before. I've done it by keeping it in it and it's just be prepared, have something underneath to catch it. It can get messy really fast. I almost forgot something, vent tube. Doesn't matter, yours isn't bolted, of course. It's just resting on top of the transmission, hear that? That's your, that's your vent tube that's not attached to anything. All right, I'm gonna go up there. So I pulled backwards, we started to get it separated. You just need to get the bell housing over this triangulated brace on the bottom. If you left it on. So we'll just give it a little bit of low, pull it back, there we go. That looks good. Start dropping it a little more. See what I mean by your vent tube? This is usually up here, kind of, I think it's, but uh, yeah, that's bolted to something. Yours was just kind of, yeah, it's, it's fine. Again, Dave, you're uh, missing bolts. Well, half of it's there, it's just broken off in the flywheel. 
All right, well, let's get the uh, pressure plate clutch disc and flywheel off and we'll go from there. It was missing three 14s around the bell housing. Dang, dog, you really got a DE. All like, the you're out there doing real DE things. All the 17s, I could loosen by hand, like the ones up top around the bell housing. This thing's gonna sing afterwards, though, because, you know, it is a DE. So I joined the 21st century, got an impact. Uh, you are missing a pressure plate bolt. Looking at the head, it doesn't look like there's a lot of wear on there. And we didn't find it when we took the transmission out. So I'm pretty sure that is from installation. Regardless, we're gonna go zip the rest of these off and that one is stuck in the flywheel. We're replacing it anyway, so I can stay there. So if, while removing these guys, uh, if you damage any coming out or if you're like Dave and you had one shear off, we do sell replacements of these. They are sold separately, washer and bolt. So you can buy as many of whichever you need. That's just from taking the bolts out. It's gonna get messy. Remember the whole white shirt thing? Yeah, this is, this is where it's gonna matter. Oh, there we go. Hey, John. Yeah. Come look at this pile of bushing. Do you, do you notice anything? Oh, fail. Wow. Is that an auto? That's special. That's what that is. You, you gotta take the, okay, you're <laughs> doing it. What yeah. am I talking about? Yeah, we're, we're changing now. That's sad. You know, the good thing about all these issues we keep finding is this is kind of like worst case scenario. You know what I mean? Like, so if you're watching this, trying to do it at home, like this, this is as bad as it could be. Clutch wear looks fine other than, you know, a broken hub. So we're, things got wild. So you've been with us, things have been missing, things have been wrong. Uh, it had a autopilot bushing and a manual pilot bushing and it like destroyed itself uh there's some wear on the uh transmission on the input shaft we'll show you guys kind of look at it. it's definitely something you need to check when you're doing this while you got it out but it full on you know my scale of one to five this is full five like six like fabrication we had to cut we had to die grind and get the old manual one out and then work on the auto one to come out i guess whoever did this install before us just slammed a manual one in there so here's a few clips enjoy that's not the pilot bushing that should be in this car dave you you blew your motor that's an auto pilot bushing that's been like hogged <laughs> out the bronze pilot bushing in there it looks beat to hell oh boy I didn't do it! <laughs> One eternity later. <laughs> yeah, no. Wiggling, it's not like coming further out. <laughs> Boy, that escalated quickly. All right, so for sake of the video, what we've done is we took a new pilot bushing and went ahead and seated it in the crank. So this is how it should be when you've removed the flywheel. But now that that's off, we can head over to pilot bushing. So we'll need the puller. Expand those jaws out. Just like that. Make sure it's getting tight and boom. Pilot out, easy. Cool, so old pilot out, new pilot. 
Just gonna set it kind of right in the middle of the crank. Just give it a few love taps just to set it in. And then once it's kind of in that recessed pocket, grab a 15 mil socket. And it's the exact same size as Pilot. You can just slowly tap it on in. There you go. So now let's go over to the transmission to do throw out and uh, let's talk a little bit about clutch forks. So with the noise that Dave was having, we thought the throw out was probably the main culprit. It's definitely worn and grooved. It's got some issues, but the uh, clutch plate, that hub ended up being a lot of the chatter. Still, while we're here, every clutch kit comes with a new throwout bearing. So we're gonna swap that out. But on top of that, we're gonna replace this fork. Dave's car is an 03, and in 2003, clutch forks were stamped. Pressure plate changed in 04, more clamp load, so they made a new fork to handle that. Well, we're going beyond even that 04 kind of upgraded one with the Z1. So we're gonna change the fork, change the throw out. Uh, this boot has a nice little tear in it. We're gonna get that out, regrease all that. So let's get it all broken down first. All right, so you can just grab the throw out bearing, push the fork hole all the way forward. And we have a new spring and everything with this. So just kind of rotate it and it'll unclock itself and you can just pull it right out. Then there's another spring in the back here for the pivot ball and clutch fork. You just pull it straight away from the cover, slide it out. There's that and the factory chromoly ball. Cool. So here you can see factory stamp fork, right? And then your upgrade. Definitely beefier, definitely heavier, no matter how much load he has on that pressure plate, this thing will be able to handle everything, not bend, not torque. Yeah, definitely a good upgrade. So we do have to remove the pivot ball that's in there as well. Oh, let's get this boot out of here as well. Yeah, ain't no good. Yeah, much better. Sleeve, I checked the inside, ran my finger along. I'm gonna get it cleaned up a little bit more. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with this. The throw out doesn't make any noise, but it's definitely like nasty, grimy. There's definitely a little bit of play in it. So let's go over into the diff building room where we have a press and we'll get this old coil off and the new one on. We have a press. Uh, if you don't have a press, then highly recommend taking your sleeve with your new throw bearing to a shop, have them press it on. You can do the whole find a socket that's the same size and try to hit it on thing, but you're doing it at your own risk. Uh, I've seen people do it and it works, and I've seen people do it and it didn't work. Clean it up. So to assemble throw out bearing sleeve, throw out bearing back to the fork, slide the spring on like that. And then we're going to turn it, that way these forks touch the opposite of where they were wearing, that way it'll just wear evenly. And you just slide this guy back up a little bit onto these prongs. And there you go. There we go. Big thing to do, watch for when you're putting on your flywheel, there's a dowel right here, okay? So that little guy right there. There is a spot on the back of your flywheel for that dowel to sit into. You can get it wrong, like if you don't know to look for it because you'll just put it up and it'll go on about, you know, three quarters of the way. And then when you put your bolts in and start tightening it, it's very easy to push that dowel back into the crank. So as you tighten these bolts, you never even know it was there. Absolutely have to get that right. Otherwise your crank position sensor that's here is sending all kinds of messed up stuff to ECU and your car won't start or it'll run bad after you do a clutch. So if that happens, you may have put the flywheel on backwards. So pilot on that dowel. And we had a hard time getting this thing off. 
we cleaned it up in this area as much as we could, but it's definitely gonna be still tough to get it on 100% straight. All right, cool. So we got flywheel on, pushed up <clears throat> all the way up against the crank as much as we can. We didn't talk about the flywheel bolts that came off because they are not OE ones, so we just took them off, uh, threw them away. We got a whole new set of eight, new OE ones, red Loctite, not a lot. Never overdo it. That is plenty. All right, so the factory ones are T55 Torx. So, like I said, I'm not going any kind of tight on these. I'm just gonna go in a crisscross pattern just until they're starting to get a little snug. So time to torque these down to 68 foot pounds. And then fresh, clean microfiber. Friction disc. Dave is going with the unsprung full face disc so it gives you all the good kind of easy driving characteristics that you want of a organic full face not like the puck that was in it making it super grabby but this hub is not sprung like this one is it's all solid and a big benefit of that is less weight in this disc which means less weight on the input shaft of the transmission uh, it's lighter it'll give you quick snappy kind of gear changes it's less work for the synchros the heavier your clutch disc is, the more your synchros have to work to slow down that input uh, shaft speed. So, good option there. And then we'll go with the pressure plate. So, with every kit, you get an alignment tool. So you're just gonna come over behind. You're gonna come up, place the friction disc on, put the alignment tool through it, and then just kind of find that center right there. And then you're gonna push it up, make sure that tool's all the way in there, and it'll sit just like that. And now our pressure plate will slide over and the hole in the middle is big enough to kind of go over this. So once we get everything on the pressure plate torqued down and tightened up, you just pull that plug out, your hub. One side of it is kind of shallow and one side protrudes. Protruding side faces away from your engine, just like this. It will go together if you get it backwards, but it won't engage, it'll be 100% wrong, it won't work. But it will allow you to bolt it together. So make sure your hub is facing the rear of the car. Please don't forget that. Pressure plate can be a little, uh, a little confusing. Uh, these surfaces are already clean, they're good to go. There's a lot of holes on the edge of this thing. Um, some are for bolts, some are for dowels. It does only go on and line up one way. So I'm just looking three bolt holes right there with one dowel on bolt number three, if you were to call this one, two, three, left to right. So looking number three right here. So it should be like that. And then just kind of take your palm. You can just usually kind of take your fist and get it to rest on those dowels enough. That way you can take your hands off, grab your hardware, and uh, we'll start talking it down. So got our 12 -ness? Yeah, 12s. Our nine of them for the pressure plate. So we're just gonna start threading these guys in. All right, pressure plate bolts are in. Torque wrench is yelling at me. Uh, we're gonna go in a two-step process in a zigzag pattern all the way across, kind of just like you would on anything else. 14 on step one and 32 on step two. So. Cool. 
All right, so once you get all of them to 14, then you're gonna take your torque wrench, pump it up to 32, and do it all one more time. And then pull the alignment to lap. Now we're ready to put the transmission back in. Yeah, you don't have to have a lift to do your clutch, but it, it helps. All right, so before we get started with putting this back up here, uh, one thing I'm gonna say, especially for the guys that are doing it on jack stands, is take your time. It can get very frustrating trying to get it at the right angle, the right height, trying to stab the transmission back to the crankshaft. Just give it time my first time i walked away for it for two hours struggling with it took a 30 minute break came out and got it on the first try so be patient and uh don't don't do it wrong for clarification him talking about his first time was doing the transmission <laughs> whatever that movie is 13 oh 13 when they dock to the space station oh right she's back in we made it we did it we did it so like i said before we got a new bell housing bolt kit so it comes with everything you need and get a few of these just in started by hand just kind of thread them until they stop Put it back into place. Slide them right in. So put the sleeve back in, center it up. <clears throat> the pin with the fork. Put your shield on and start threading one of those bolts in. All right, so we got trans in, bolted, back in, harness on, tightened all up, got this brace back on. So slaves bolted up. Next thing to do, we're gonna lower the car because the shifter is just kind of sitting up there, up on the center console. We're gonna push it through, put the 12 mil down here, put that rubber boot back on, and then we should be good for the drive shaft and the exhaust. All right, so we're inside the car. We're almost done getting there, close to the end. So shifter, spring, pops in the top. That's the same up and down. So you're gonna put your shifter in with the reverse lockout knob here pointing towards the uh, passenger side. You're gonna slide it straight through and push your little cup down into the transmission. Oh, it's like a jack in the box. So take your plate, put it on top, and then using your three 10 mils, 
get these started. Right, now we're gonna address a lot of people who when they put everything back together, they say, I can't get into fifth and sixth. Plate's kind of hand tight. Once we get back down underneath the car and connect the uh, shifter to the shift linkage, you're gonna run through the gears. This plate can shift left and right. So that's fold towards passenger and then that's fold towards driver. So that can, if you put it in all the way to the right, kind of towards passenger, when you go over for fifth and sixth, you're actually going further than fifth and sixth. That's why you'll go all the way over and go up or down and it just feels like you're hitting a wall both ways. So let's get the car in the air, connect the transmission to the shifter, and then we'll come back in, dial this up and finish up the interior. Cool, so now we'll just take shift linkage, line it up with the shifter. Come on, there we go. And then there's a weld in that on the other side, so you just thread it in. So now we'll just stretch this rubber boot around here, get that back up there. And while the car's in the air, we'll go ahead and finish up the exhaust and the drive shaft. Three five, I can say it. Good. All right, so back in the car, shifters connected. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So the way you wanna clock this thing, keep it just a little loose, that way you can adjust it and everything. Go over into fifth and kind of pull it, and you don't want it to touch the shifter, just slightly next to it, kind of like that. And then you can tighten it down from there. And so third, fourth, fifth, sixth, reverse, good to go. After that, triangulated rubber boot, gonna slide it down on over the shifter, maybe a little on the tight side, just kind of press it down, don't worry. These things are really resilient, it's really hard to rip them. Rubber over all four bolt holes. And then this bezel is supposed to go on top and hold it down like that. And then that on top. All right, so you get all those bolts back in, grab your interior trim piece, Pull your HVAC ribbon back in, snap that guy back into place, and then you're gonna kind of rock it in front to back and pull it into fourth. That way it gives you a little bit extra wiggle room. Cool. Then pull your shifter through. There we go. And then just kind of start up at the top, work your way down, and it'll all press into place. Cool. Good to go. All right, so drive shaft in, shifter's all good, exhaust all bolted up. Everything should be good. So while I was up there, I could feel pedal had pressure, but there may be a little bit of pedal adjustment we need to do on the backside. So let's get it down get it off the lift and uh, see where our engagement is. It goes into gear, everything perfectly fine. Yeah, it needs to be, it needs to be adjusted a little bit. So. But it made no noise. <laughs> I noticed as I come off the clutch pedal, it's right off the floor. 
and what that could be an indication of. It's releasing the clutch enough to where I can change gears and do it, but it might not be all the way, so it might be dragging a little bit. You really need to have like the last kind of quarter of your clutch throw towards the uh, floor, like be free travel. Like it, when I'm coming off the ground, it shouldn't be engaging immediately. It should be kind of, you know, a third to halfway up. So let's get underneath it, adjust it real quick and uh, be on our way. Cool, so what I was talking about, adjusting it off the floor, this is your clutch master cylinder. So this bolts through the firewall. So your engine bay is up here, rest of the car is back here. And then this is the clevis that goes to the back of your clutch pedal. So as you press the pedal down, this plunger goes in like that, right? Pumps fluid, will work. You got a 12 mil right here. So it's really hard to show under the dash. We'll try to show you as best we can, but you just back that 12 mil off and then the rod has a little bit of knurling. That way you can just grab it with your fingers and twist it with this clevis sitting still and you can thread it to expand it or collapse it. If you have too much throw, you can make it shorter. In this case, we're gonna make it a little bit longer. That way the engagement isn't right off the floor. So we'll just make the throw a little bit longer and that'll give Dave that extra engagement he needs so it's not releasing right off the floor. So yeah, let's, let's go do that underneath the dash. That feels better. Yeah. That sucks. All right, so that wraps up the clutch job on Dave's car. Obviously, we ran into a few snags. Be aware, guys, that might happen to you. Everything is case by case scenario, but that's the basic nitty gritty. And uh, appreciate you guys sticking around. Feel free to comment on what how-to you guys want to see us do next. Like, subscribe, all the things, and we'll see you next time.